they're yours. Hit that one more time. I am, I am the, the number one determinant number one of, the of the success or failure. Or failure. Here we go. Of my, of my student. Hey, y'all, you have a strong summer. Kick some butt next year. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. That's the mindset. That's the attitude. Love you guys. And we are live. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We're in week 101. Let me see who we got here. Let's see who's dropping by this morning. We got uh, Kimberly Carruthers. We got Demetrius Scott. Who else is on here? Renee Graham, Yolanda McKinney. Congratulations, Yolanda. I, I didn't read the full email, but I got the gist. I, you know, I've been, you know, I've been running. You saw it on social media, but I, I'm gonna shout. I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna uh, take a read through later on today and shout you out about it later. Janine Wilkins is in the building, all the way from Alaska. D. Walker, Rodney Williams, Golfar, W. T. Angel Gates, Woodard is in the building. We got uh, Marsha Babcock, Vanessa Zeskin, Tony McClenny, Ohio Girl Jones, my man Michael Benton out there, and Cincy D. Walker, Mike J. Principal Baggage. That's Mr. Principal Baggage. Probably going to be Dr. Principal Baggage at some point. Stacy Joseph is in the building. Damali, oh, 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 oh Hennis. Man, that's one of my former students, man. It's always good when the former students check in. Uh, Damali, stay on here for the whole 90 minutes, man. We're going to be hot this morning. Rita Ellis is in the building. Melissa Jones, Chunu. John Herricks, where we at here? Laura Gonzalez, Crystal Rose, they're all in the building. Let me know where y'all are coming from. You know, hit that retweet button. Hit that share button as you come in. Lisa Kimball's in the building. My man, Rashad Davis, checking in all the way from Vegas. We got Phil Wilson, my man. How you doing there, Phil? Good to see you. We got Principal Dot McKeever, Jeter in the building. Marsha Poe, Jasmine Harris. Um, where we at? Good, we at? We got we got the man, the myth, the legend, Principal Amin Ra in the building. Y'all remember uh, Principal Amin Ra a few weeks ago? Now we got his homie on the East Coast in here today. We got Rachel Wells in the building. Central Hicks, my man, Angie, Angie Mallory is in the building. Sherrod Lamonte Laws. Y'all hit that share button. Hit that retweet button as you come in. And I might add, I'll say this again when I get to my announcements, but I'm, I'm getting ready to uh, wean, wean off the um, my personal Facebook page. I'm not going to be using that after this month. We're going to be strictly the virtual AP Leadership Academy Facebook page, the YouTube virtual AP Leadership Academy channel, and the Twitter page at Principal Cafele. But I don't need to use my personal Facebook page anymore. We use those other three platforms. I'll tell you more about that. Who we got here? We got Tarrell and Lee in the building from C.A. Johnson. Man, I was there yesterday. C.A. Johnson High School. The, only, the, 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 the sole remaining all black or or i should say historically black high school in the entire state of south carolina right i uh, had a great day there yesterday Ven uh venice lewis is in the building tanya corbett's in the building principal siobhan jackson's in the building alinda o'leary is in the building the queen my wife kimberly broughton cafele is in the building hit the share button hit the retweet button let them know we're here billy cook's in the building um Radika Denish is in the building. Dana Has, uh, Hassinger uh, Coelho. Oh, I know I messed that up, but but Dana, you from Waterbury. You know Waterbury, Waterbury, Connecticut is family. So I'm glad to see you here. We've been rocking all year long. Uh, Stephen Jones is in. Stephen Johnson is in the building. Uh, thank you, Phil Wilson. 
I'm trying. Champion Principal is in the building. D. Walker, Lysandra Brackens is in the building. Cammy Berry is in the building. My man, Matt Brewster, is in the building. See, we got all the Nort heads in the building because we got we got Principal Akbar Cook in the building. So I'm seeing an uptick in Nort this morning. My man, Otis Kitchen, the teammate of Brother Principal Akbar in the building. Who else we got? John Few, uh, Keunda Jackson Wilson's in the building. It's just about that time, man. Look here, y'all. It's 11. I see Josh Tovar, though. I got to shout out my brother. Josh Tovar, he goes by MPA Jaguars these, day, these days. But look here, y'all. It's 11 o'clock. I, before I even say good morning to you, you know we going 90 minutes, man. You know that, right? So just get, get the popcorn. Sit back. You know, don't, don't run off somewhere. Hit, hit, to hit somebody up and tell them they need to be here. So let me say to everybody now formally, good morning. Greetings. Welcome to week 101 of the virtual AP Leadership Academy. And I don't know about you. You know I say that every week, man. I don't know about you, but I think I know. I mean, you hear but, you know, I can only speak definitively for me. So I, so I need you to know every week, 101 weeks, I want you to know how I feel. I'm on fire. That's how I feel. Somebody on here that's new to me, they're like, yo, what's up with this dude? Listen, this, this is called the Virtual AP Leadership Academy. It's sole purpose is to develop assistant principals. That's it. It serves no other purpose but to develop assistant principals while asking the question, does my assistant principalship benefit my school academically? That's why I do this. No other reason. So I'm saying as assistant principal, matter of fact, I'm saying that any capacity is on here because it's, I mean, it's, it's open to everybody. But you can't do this if you're not bringing the energy with you, the excitement with you, the enthusiasm with you, the passion with you. You got to bring those ingredients, which I brought today, despite my flight being canceled last night, despite having to fly to JFK, despite taking an Uber, paying $150, despite not getting any sleep, I'm on fire! Woo! That's how I'm feeling, y'all. I hope you're feeling like me, man, despite what's going on in the world. It's stuff happening in the world. If you're on fire, hit me with them fire emojis right quick. Just put them on there, man. Let me let me see how you feel. I see them coming. Hey, y'all, let me get these announcements real quick. I got my motivational message first. I'm calling it being an outside-the-box thinker. Once again, being an outside-of-the-box thinker. That's my message today. What am I saying? I'm saying, y'all you, know who my guest is. I got Principal Akbar Cook. This dude ain't in the box, man. You can't do this at a high level if you're in the box with everybody else. You got to step outside the box. You got to leap outside the box, jump outside the box. I used to tell my folks in my circle, if you ever see me in the box, yank my behind out of it. Ain't nothing happening in the box, man. So I'm saying if you're going to do this at a high level, you got to think outside of the box. So start with your thinking. Think outside the box, but then step outside the box and then slam the box shut and throw it in the garbage because the box ain't doing you no good. You, I mean, in, in times like today, you got to be outside, man. You got to be outside the box. So that's my message this morning. As far as my quick motivational, I'm asking the question, are you an outside of the box thinker? Hit that share button. Hit that retweet button. Hey, y'all, first time is on here today. Don't let this be your last. I've been doing this for 101 weeks. This was only meant to be 18 weeks, and I'm out. 
But I saw the excitement, man. I saw the enthusiasm. I kept this thing going 101 weeks, and I got a skip, man. I'm booked till December, right? So make sure if you're a first timer, stay with me on whatever platform. I'll go over that again later on. Matter of fact, let me do it now. YouTube, Virtual AP Leadership Academy. Facebook, Virtual AP Leadership Academy. Twitter, Principal Cafele. I'm getting ready to phase out the per my personal page because I don't need it. So those of you that watch me on the personal page, start, start, stop watching me on that page and go to one of the others because I'm getting ready to shut that one down. Not the page, but the broadcast on that page. I'll probably share to it, but I'm not going to stream to it, right? So that's that. Next, um, you know, I, I got to, man, this thing is so hot. I can't even hold it in one hand, man. I can't. It's, it's just blazing. It's just blazing. The Equity and Social Justice Education 50. If you don't have it yet, this is my newest joint. If you don't have it yet, it, critical questions for improving opportunities and outcomes for black students. If you don't have it yet, if you got a second device, like here, I got my computer here, but the phone's here, go to the phone. Just go to Amazon and get it, right? Like right now, right now. Just, just get the book right now, right? It's, it's blazing. Man, my fingers, I, I held it too long. So get your, get yourself a copy, or you can go to principalcafele.com, or you can go to um, barnesandnoble.com, wherever books are sold, you can get the book. Um, I'm rocking, you know, this, my, this this Jackie Robinson month, right? So you know I wear the Negro League jerseys every day, but this is not a Negro League jersey. This is the Montreal Royals. This is the first team that Jackie Robinson played for after he left the Negro League. So the, this is the Brooklyn Dodgers farm team at the time. Uh, Montreal Royals. So he played for them in 1946 and then went on to Brooklyn in 1947. So I'm going to be rocking on uh, Jackie Robinson gear for the month because this is this is April. So April 15 is Jackie Robinson Day. And then lastly, um, just want to remind everyone again, we're all about does the assistant principalship benefit my school academically? That's what this is about. Hit the share button, hit the retweet button, let them know I'm done with my announcements. I am ready. I'm on fire. Let me bring my guest up here right now. We got the man, the myth, the legend. We got Principal Akbar Cook in the building. Good morning, my brother. How you feeling? Good morning, man. You got me fired up. I'm ready to go. Point me at him. Let's there, do it. There you go. There you go. You know, um, before I go to the bio, and I'm even going to show a short video, I, I, you know, as I ask all my guests, you know, it, there's, a, there's a lot of there's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of bad. There's a lot of strife in the world, even within our own lives. But when we look hard enough, sometimes we miss it. We forget about the good. We forget about the win. So my question to you, over the course of the last seven days, just give us one. What's a win that you can share with us that that, that could resonate with someone else that's watching, that someone else may benefit from hearing about your win? Wow, a win. I would say... Uh... Uh, my my partnership with CVS, so I'm I'm trying to put a CVS in my building, not for my kids to 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 just work a CVS, but more importantly to learn how to do retail management. I'm a business and finance school, so I can get these kids these externships, and they can lead to you know those those living wage type jobs in the CVS pipeline. So I'm happy about that right now. CVS, what what a win! See that's 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 what I'm talking. See folks, going back to the message. Thinking outside the box. I mean, who 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 thinks that way except outside the box thinkers, right? So let me, you know, I want to I want to go to your bio before because I, I want to show a video too. But let me let me let me just let the people know because this is this is brand new and it too is is blazing. I can't keep it in one hand, you know. But let me let me there you go. Focus on the love. This is Principal Cooks, Principal Akbar Cook. Let me get my hand off his name. This is his newest book, so you can go right to Amazon right now right and, and get your copy right now focus on the love right just go and get it right now right now hey Akbar, you know i promote these books and typically they go to number one on amazon in the categories they're in when i do this so hopefully the folks on here they're going to take it right to number one right on amazon we'll check it later on tonight and let's see where it is focus on the love y'all Akbar cook let me read the bio Akbar, i'm just going right from the bio you got in the book and uh Folks, you know, I, I tell you guys every week when the bios are long, I just read them anyway, because I want you to get the fullness of who's on the program as opposed to, you know, cutting it short. And then you don't really know what this person's about. Right. So we got time. That's 
That's the bottom line. Here we go. Akbar H. Cook Sr. was born and raised in Newark's West Ward, which is the same ward where his school is located. He attended Essex Catholic High School, where he excelled as a student and basketball player. But Mr. Cook attended St. Catherine's College in Kentucky on two basketball scholarships before graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree in education from Florida Atlanta Uni Atlantic University, a Division I university. And is that pronounced Boca Rat Ratton? Boca Raton. Yeah, there you go. Boca Raton, Florida. He went on to receive a master's degree in administration and supervision from St. Peter's University in Jersey City in 2006. Y'all remember that name? You know that name, St. Peter's in Jersey City. He made that Cinderella run. Mr. Cook's love for children and basketball led, to, led him to Newark Vocational School in 2008, where he became head coach of the boys basketball team. From head coach, from the head basketball coach position, he was promoted to vice principal in 2012. In 2014, he was assigned to West Side High School as the vice principal. Mr. Cook is well known for having a stern yet caring presence in the lives of many of Newark's youth. His desire to uplift and educate children is always at the forefront of his work in Newark Public Schools. Mr. Cook's passion to improve his community and impact children's lives has led him to volunteer in food kitchens and participate in Christmas tree and toy drives. He also organizes recreational activities for North Public School students and works closely with the North Police Department to ensure safe transportation for all students after, uh, after school functions. In the summer of 2016, Mr. Cook started the Lights On program at Westside High School from the peak hours of 6 to 11 p.m. to ensure that our students and other young adults in the community are safe during peak crime hours. His vision for Lights On became a reality after he lost students to gun violence, which we're going to talk further about soon. Mr. Akbar Cook was named principal of Westside High School for 2018-19 school year. One month into his new role as principal, Mr. Cook had, had his grand opening for a laundromat at Westside High School, which was a project to help ameliorate bullying concerns for students who were displaced and had no funds or access to washing machines. We're going to talk about that, too. The bullying resulted in excessive school absences and after school and after the laundromat installation, the attendance rates increased significantly. The initiative has been named Washing Bullying Away. After being featured on the Star Ledger, on Star in the Star Ledger, and the success of the newly installed laundromat reached the producers of the Ellen DeGeneres show, who invited Principal Cook as a guest of the show on two separate occasions where he secured over $100,000 from DeGeneres and a year's supply of food from General Mills for the food pantry. His lights on segment on CBS Evening News garnered the attention of Oprah Winfrey, who visited the school and dropped off a generous donation of $500,000, a half million, to ensure the longevity of the lights on program. He continues to create new initiatives such as the development of the urban farm on campus, a built-in soccer pitch, and brand new kitchen for home economics. Principal Cook is a divine leader who, who builds other leaders just like himself while focusing on the love. Lastly, in addition to serving as principal of the West Side High School, he also serves as program director of Great Newark Life Camp, a summer camp for inner city youth. Akbar Cook resides in New Jersey with his wife and three sons. Whew! That's a lot there, y'all that he talked about in the interview we can with with ellen we could talk about here so you know powerful uh video um principal doc principal cook and i um i've watched it a few times over the years and and also the follow-up so uh just kudos to you on the work you're doing let's let's jump into it you know uh principal cook i asked all my interviewees um and i want to ask you who is as an educator who is principal akbar cook Wow. First and foremost, uh, Principal Kefele, I'm a, I'm a father, right? I'm a father, I'm a son, uh, I'm a grandson. Uh, and I'm, and I'm, I hope to be a role model to all my little black and brown babies all in the greater Newark area that, that need someone to lean on. So I think that's who I am. It's in my DNA. My grandmother took care of foster children, even though she had enough grandchildren, but she still found her way in her heart to take care of the less fortunate. And, uh, I think I'm, I'm just love personified now because because my love is on full display being the leader of this building. Love it. Love it. You know, you entered the field of education and there's a million different directions you could have gone in. But you you went into the direction of education. Why did you enter education and what continues to drive your passion 
for this work. So I entered, I said a little bit of it. My family, this is the family business. That's first and foremost, taking care of the less fortunate. I had aunts that were in education and I was exposed to life camp. I talked about it in that segment. I was exposed to life camp at a young age. And I think there I found out that being a counselor, I was like the kid whisperer. Like I understood what the babies were saying and I, and I had the heart to see it through whatever they were going through. So when I went to school in Kentucky and I was a business major, I immediately had a 1.8 and I started to mess up. And then I called my auntie and I said, auntie, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm about to flunk out of school. She said, Ak, you know, you love the babies. Switch your major to education and I will stick around for you and, and, and help you see that journey. So I definitely uh, listened to her and I, I'm leaving stuff out, but I, I'm, I'm going to get to it. But I um, when I first came back to Newark after I did my stint in school, I got hired to be a bouncer. Basically, they would hire me as to be the, uh, you know, a teacher, but they seen this big black guy. I'm six, seven. I'm about 275. They thought I was going to be throwing kids against the wall, and that wasn't me. I was this teddy bear. I, I loved the kids. I loved working with them, laughing and joking. And, and, and Kefele, that school gave up on me. And, and I want you to think about this, Kefele. I am a, a, a black male in the elementary, you know, middle school education field. There's not a lot of black men in there. So I'm like a unicorn. And for that school to give up on me, that spoke to where they thought black men should be at that time. You're I went right. to another school in Newark. And they had a lot of men of color and I was able to, you know, take some from each of these men on there. And I be, and I started to fill out and become this uh, person. But it wasn't until I was coaching at North Vocational that the principal there, she seen that love. And she was like, wow, I want that in my building. So I got hired as a VP because of the love I showcased versus getting hired as a teacher to be the bouncer. You know, I, I, was, I was just having a, a conversation about what you just said about that that stereotypical image that we that, that a school district may think let, let's bring let's let's find the big black guy and 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 he'll take care of it so they look at you and they think you're that guy this 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 big black guy aggressive and when the kids see me they'll just be scared and straighten up it, it doesn't even work that way and and they're not afraid of our size and etc what 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 they want to see is are you down with me are you in my corner do you have my back? So they saw you and they saw the love. They saw something very different, right? And and and, and I'm glad you said that just for the folks on here to just dispel some of them, them stereotypes and notions about who we are when we walk into that space as educators. We don't have to be the disciplinary, right? We, we, we have intelligence as well. You know, you touched on it, but I still want to ask you the question uh, this way. You're a leader now. You've been a leader for a while, for a little bit, going back to your AP days in, in 2014. So you've been in it. But then you become principal. There's a lot of different reasons why someone chooses to become a principal. I had I had several reasons, but there was one that superseded everything else. Mine was I wanted to be that guy for my boys who were predominantly black and Latino. I'm asking you of all the reasons that you decided to make that transition to, to the principalship, was there one that was sort of more important than the others that you said, this is why I have to do this? So I, I want to preface this question. Well, the answer that I had, a, I had Larry Rampersoon. Uh, he was my principal at Westside and he allowed me to fly. Mm. It, it takes a strong man to let this boy who light is glowing be him you know what i mean that the confidence that he had because the lights on program was started while i was an ap i even started getting ready for the laundromat while i was an ap he mm -hmm. wanted me to win so i want to start there but you you started off with this whole conversation about thinking outside of the box now way i think and way he think is two different is two different ways so to answer your question i got tired of asking for permission you know what i mean to be me and fly and he was ready. He was ready to move into greener pastures, which he did. He went downtown and got a promotion. But I was tired of asking. Like, I'm, I'm, I, I feel that pressure, that heat, that steam that these kids need. I often say our babies can't wait for the policies to change, right? So we got to do it now. I couldn't do that as an AP. I needed him to go to where he did, and I needed to fly. And I've been flying ever since. But that's that. That's my biggest reason. I got tired of asking for permission. I want to I want to elaborate on that a little bit. You, I want to talk to whatever principals are out there watching right now. 
I'm, I'm making the assumption principles that you are allowing your APs to fly, that you're training them, that you're exposing them, you're, you're, you're ensuring that they're well-rounded. But let's say there's some principal watching right now and, and you're not doing that or you're very new and you haven't figured this thing called principal leadership out just yet. I'm saying to you via Akbar Cook, you got to let that AP spread his or her wings. You got to let them fly. They're bringing something to the table or they wouldn't have been hired in the first place. They probably were superstars in the classroom. Well, let's tap into that as opposed to suppressing all of that and making them the full time disciplinary. You got to let them fly. So 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 with that. I got I got a lot to throw at you. I'm talking fast. Akbar. You know, you, you talk extensively. You've, you've talked extensively about Westside High School when you arrived in 2014 as an assistant principal relative to the challenges um, that the school had. But specifically, you talked about acts of gun violence outside of the school, in the community that had fatal repercussions for individual students in your school. What I, what I want you to do is just talk to us about the, that experience as a new assistant principal and how those years, those two years shaped your thinking toward, toward the creation of Lights On. And when I say that, I watched the video that you did and you were very specific about what happened with three children. I want you to share that because I know in, in terms of these fatalities, because I know that there are folks out there who are dealing with stuff that spills back into the building as well. All right, so I'm gonna try to make it go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go quick because I know we got a lot of questions to do. So, uh, I want you to just look at this as a whole model for a district. Uh, my school was uh, CTE, meaning we had career technical education, similar to the school you was at in North Tech, sir. So we had that. So that's what North Vocational was. We had another school called North Early College. They took the college approach where they trying to get the kids to have a dual enrollment and have an associate's degree. So West Side was the worst school probably in the country. So the powers that be thought, well, you know what? Let's take these two high performing small schools. Let's throw them in West Side and we'll jump started and bring it back to life. That sounds all fine and dandy, but you got my kids. You got the kids in North Early College and West Side. None of us wanted to be together at mm -hmm. all. So mm. then you put us in one building and you segregate us by giving us different color uniforms. So it was a lot of infighting, uh, sir. But prior to me gaining the access to this building, I walked up here and I wanted to see it for itself. S smell weed the whole time. It was like a mall. Kids were just window shopping, going by classes, chilling, cussing, doing all this stuff. And it was one baby girl that was tearing this whole foyer up. And it was an assistant superintendent there. And I'm looking at them like, are y'all not going to do anything? They didn't do anything, right? So I go back to my kids. And my kids had the opportunity to leave. Most of them left. And I could have left. Kefele, I could have left. But I was like, I can't leave my babies to that. You know what I mean? So I came up. As soon as we get there for, uh, we do the, uh, you know, when the kids come in for um, prior, to, prior to school starting, uh, bridge program. Mm -hmm. that, that girl I just told you about it was 10 of the four years she was missing right so now I'm looking at kids all these ice grills gang signs they don't know me from Adam and I'm like I'm just thinking like listen man my grandma used to say man if, if that kid is in school somebody loves that baby and that baby loves somebody because they wouldn't be the gangsters don't come to school they already look their mom and dad in their face and say you can't make me ain't nothing you can do about it that's it so if that baby is there, they somebody got him. So I stopped looking at the ice grills and say, you know what? We're going to be consistent. I'm going to love on them. I'm going to be fair and strict because all kids want structure. That baby girl I referenced was missing. They found her body, I want to say, two weeks into school, right? She was killed because she was pregnant. They didn't want the baby. And I'm going to be graphic for your viewers. She was liquid when they found her in an abandoned building. They couldn't even, they didn't even know what kind of body it was. My school's in mourning. I don't know these kids. All of this stuff. I had to reach out to the streets, Cafe Le. I had to get the OGs from the neighborhood. I'm from the West Ward, but I don't know all these new subset of gangs. So I got the OGs to come in, and they started helping us lay down the law and then starting to figure out. So I hired them as consultants, and it worked out. So now I'm rolling, Cafe Le. They kidnapped one of my babies. I'm talking about soprano style. They kidnapped one of my kids. Mm. Allegedly, he was... The, the 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 uh the 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 source to all of the good drugs he knew to connect he didn't give it up they decapitated his body decapitated him and threw his body in his hood that's the second baby i lost brutally murdered and now it was the summer cafe 
And I'm literally watching everything that happened in the summer. It was my babies that were doing it or was happening to them. So I felt so helpless. I'm like, I can't sit back and watch this. It was like watching a scary movie, even popcorn. I couldn't do it. We get, we righted the ship. We get back to school the next year. Now I got better teachers in the classrooms. Kids are in there. Cause that was a big thing. Cook, you want us in class, but we ain't learning nothing. We, we, we righted the ship. I had this one kid to this day, the most gangster kid I ever had. I'm talking about in school, infectious smile, but I would not want to see that baby outside of school hours at night. He just was that kid. Ankle bracelet, cops coming every week. And I'm like, yo, like, what's going on? He's like, Cook, don't even worry about none of that. My mama deserved to see me walk across the stage. She going to see me walk across that stage. And I felt that two weeks before graduation, they killed him. Drive by shooting. Now it's the summer coming up again. And that's why I said I had to do something else. And that's why we came up with the Lights On program. Wow. I feel like for like 10 seconds, I need the folks to just let that process. You um, you said a lot there, you know, and I'm, I'm looking at these comments. Um, one of my colleagues here said, this doesn't sound real. Right. And that's you know, that's that's what it is. So just let that process somebody. Some of you, you're dealing with the same types of situations, but others on the thread. This is probably a world you do not know. Right. Um, you know, Principal Cook, there are after school programs all over the country. You know that. But there's something about lights on that has captured the attention of a nation. And beyond the borders of this country, there's this widespread intrigue about your program. Talk to us about why there's there's just so much attention to this particular program. So I, I want to I want to pick up in that summer if I can, Cafe. Like, I, can yeah. I pick up from there? Yeah. So we had an amazing run and lights on. For anyone, I don't know what lights on for me. I wanted to create almost like a boys and girls club atmosphere. I want you all to think about the boys club model. It's a kind of outdated model. And I'm not knocking anybody boys club in their neighborhood. But if you think that you can raise enough funds to, to have a building, pay the lease, pay the boiler, pay the staff, pay the lights, that's outdated. Especially when there's a school right there to have all of that for free and you just got to get a permit, right? So in at the beginning, Cafe Le, it literally was almost recreation. Like I, I fed them. And at the time we first opened up, I had like the, you know, the prepackaged meals that we get, the free lunch. I had the you know, chicken salad sandwiches, the celery, the cheese, whatever we had that. Uh, I, I had, uh, you know, basketball, you know, football, those type of things. I had video games, things of that nature. Cafe Lay, that summer, I went from 40 to 150 to, to when the article came out with Barry Carter that you talked about, I had, I, had, I had over 200 people. So I wanted to celebrate that it was no acts of violence in my neighborhood that summer. So we get back to school, Cafe Le. I have a big celebration. I'm talking about I had ice cream trucks. I was giving out anything that wasn't stolen. It was awesome. Like, great time. Had 278 people come out. One of my baby girls come up. She gave me a high five. She gets some ice cream. She leave. She was killed by a straight bullet that night. Mm. Kind of drove home two points for me, Cafe Le. It was, it was one, I wasn't doing enough things for the girls. And we can't wait for the summer to save these kids. So since I did that cafe late and prior to COVID, this was 2015, I didn't lose any more kids to gun violence. We changed the, we, we started adding academic pieces to the Lights On program to where now I have the henna tattoos, I have the makeup, I have, we have different dance, you know, uh, uh, we have different uh, after school programs as far as uh, my, my dual enrollment thing. So, so many different things. Now we averaging 450, you know, uh, folks. And people think it's just my kids at Westside. It's not. It's mm -hmm. everybody from over here. Cause I got Newark Tech kids. I got EO kids. I like Irvington Orange. Everybody comes. It just become a place where it's the hangout now. Where everybody come. We change the food. So I got my wife, my sister, my mother. My mother doing the laundry for the baby. They don't know how to do the laundry. My wife and my mother, I mean, my, my, my sister is cooking. We got jerk chicken, fried chicken. We got macaroni and cheese, cornbread. We feeding the soul. Wow. So, so, so this was going on for a number of years, and we were good. And I'm going to fast forward. I know you're going to bring it back for me, right? Oprah comes, right? After the Ellen did Ellen twice, Oprah comes. Oprah loves lights on to the point where she... She says, I'm coming to Lights On. 
She was in New York on a Wednesday. She stayed two days just to come. Wow. You know, and we can talk about it further. I'm, I'm going to skip. But she dropped off a half a million dollars. Said, I no, want go, you ahead, to go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So, so I want you all to think about this. I was told you always give your time, your talent, or your treasures. Right? Oprah gave me her time. Because Wednesday, she was there. She could have left. She came to West Side, number blocks. Jim was 105 degrees in there, 550 people there. Not knowing Oprah was coming, but they was there. She gave me her time. We know she talented, but she gave a pizza party that day, and it was cauliflower pizza. And if you can get kids from the hood, eat cauliflower pizza, dog going it, you really talented, right? <laughs> Lastly, she gave us a half a million dollars. This was 2018. My Oprah money is still going on right now. Probably going to run out this summer. But Kafela, I want to tell you how it helped us. When COVID hit, we had to shift. No longer were the kids able to come. Hunger went up around the world and people were out these resources. What we did because Oprah gave us that money, I opened up right three times a week. So when you come on a Monday, I would give you enough hot meals for whatever you had. Kafela, you got eight people in your house. I gave you eight hot meals. But then I gave you fresh produce and dry goods for Tuesday. Wednesday, I fed you for the night. I gave you enough food for Thursday. Friday, I came. I gave you enough food for the entire weekend. We did this the entire COVID with a whole community. I'm talking about five, 600 people a night are coming and we servicing. I couldn't have did that without Oprah money. So when you ask me, how did the world get captivated? We put the right people in place. I am the sum of the people around me. I have the most, uh, I call it in my book, match my fly. But I mean, match my passion, match my work ethic, match my desire to win. I have those people around me. They were the ones that come out. Because I was in a bubble for a while, Kefele. I got asthma real bad. And I, my people was out there and on the front lines with the mask on doing that. But that's why we became a pillar in our community. And we didn't keep asking for permission. Like it was like the mayor got along with it. My superintendent got along. Like we all started rocking and rolling because we built this place. So I call it like the oasis in the land of despair. But that's why I think people are captivated. And it's so much, you know, uh, I, I see possibilities for, for, for more lights on in the world to come. Absolutely. Now, you know, you, you, you just, with everything you say, you said something that caused me to have to stop and pause and write it down. And, and, and thinking about the purpose of this platform, I, 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 want, I want you to hit this harder. You said, I am the sum of the people around me. That's powerful, right? Elaborate on that for me, because I, 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 there's somebody out here watching who's new or who's aspiring and thinks that they're going to get in here and it's just about them. Holler at us about that. So I, I, we, we hear that we hear that a lot. And, we, and, and, and most of the times, uh, Kefele, it's, it's about if I'm around a bunch of losers, I'm a loser, too. But if I put myself in a room where I don't know the most in the room, then I can aspire to be that. But I, I, I want to flip it a little bit. I had to I had to find people that match my fly. This is a selfless job. And we know principalship is a lonely profession. You know that more than anybody. Right. But I could not do this work. I'm one man. I'm one man. I could not take care of my community the way I did if I didn't have these people around me. So when I say I have a lights on program, it's literally the sum, the human capital that I place around me that watch my six and I watch theirs. My, that my, some of my people tell me, Cook, we can't save you. You need saving. You know what I mean? It, it's one of those things. Drake say that all the time. Who's going to save me when I need saving? But I keep people around me to put that circle, that prayer circle around me to guard me. Because if you think you're going to have a lights on program and you're just going to open up your building and let the hood in, it's going to be lights out real quick if you don't have that relationship with the community. So I have people there that know Bradley Court may be beefing with the number blocks over here. So Bradley Court, you got Monday. ABG, you got win. You got to have people there that can talk that talk because they do not take no disrespect nowadays. That's what, that's what you said earlier, Kefele, about – my kids don't care if I'm big. That don't mean nothing to them. That means nothing. It's about what you have inside and the relationship that you build with them. So when I say I am the sum of the people around me, I literally have people that, one, I trust with my life because this is a life and death situation. You heard about the deaths. But they know I got their back the same way. Y'all hear that out there? The sum of the people around you. I'll ask you real quick. I'm talking to the audience now. Who's in your circle? Who do you have around you? Who's supporting you? Who has your back? 
Who tells you no when you keep saying yes, right? Who's that one that's not going to let you run amok? Do you have that around you? Who's going to give you the information that you need outside of the school or within the school? You got to have them folks around you. You are the sum of the people around you. Let's keep going. You know, um, Brother Akbar, there, there are principals and assistant principals around the country and on this call who are doing big things, but they're unsung. They're doing big things in their communities, in their schools. The people in those communities and those schools, they know what they're doing. But those of us outside of that, we, we're not familiar. So these are these, those unsung heroes. When you became principal, you were unsung. No one knew Akbar Cook yet except the people in the vicinity. But then you had the audacity, I think it was within your first month, yeah, your first month in 2018, that you launched the laundromat. Now, we already know the why, but I got something bigger, the how. And here's what I mean by that. You know, and every principal on this call knows, the work of the principal is endless. It's, it's, it's this wide beyond the fingertips all the way from, from one end of the, the world to the other. There's never a day where we could say, well, I got nothing else to do. Let me just sit back and chill. Those, those days don't exist for a principal. So my question is, as a brand new principal, one month in, how the heck did you create a laundromat in the school knowing you needed it there? How'd you pull that off? So so it, it was definitely a work in progress, right? So I said I started it as an AP. I just got to show you like what happened, right? So I, I hear about my kids staying out. At the time, it said 85% of my kids were severely chronically absent. That means they were staying home five times a month. So y'all think about that. When we grew up, Cafe Lay, 19 days, you stay yeah. back. Yeah. You know, you stand out five, that's 50 days for the whole school year. You are not supposed to be nowhere near graduating or moving to the next grade. So that's when I told you I started finding out what it was, right? I'm, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. So I went to, uh, I and, and, and all my principals on here, my APs, if you're not engaging your alumni, shame on you. You have no idea who that school has, you know, sent out into the atmosphere. I engage my alum like no, no other. I have the best alumni on the planet. Mm. I meet with my alumni once a month. We all at the table and I say it right then. I say, listen, I just want to get some wash and dry or something. We got to figure this out, right? PSNG was sent at the table. PSNG is my local energy company. They said, Cook, write a grant. We'll give you some money. Hmm. I wrote the worst grant in history. I'm literally, it said, I need wash and dryers, period. That was it, right? They gave me $20,000, Cafe Lay. I was like, oh, yes, I'm going to Home Depot, Lowe's. I'm going to cash out. We about to do this. I tell my district. They said $20,000. All right, we're going to send the architects there, whatever. They came back and said it was going to be $300,000. I don't know where y'all live at that's on here, but $300,000 can buy a house. I just wanted some laundry. I just wanted a laundry room. That was it. This goes on, Cafe Lay. Stuff keep going on. So all of that nonsense was going on, Cafe Lay, the whole time. I'm not getting it. So eventually they said, man, just find a place to vent out. I said, okay. Every school in America has a place to vent out, whether you use it for your own linen or for the football team. I see my football team had a one, you know, combo dry, wash and dryer, kicked them out. All right, y'all, I found it. They went to stuff and they put, put all my wash and dries in it. Then it became, who's paying for the water? Who's paying for the electricity? I'm like, are you guys kidding me? Right? So now... Now my principal leaves and I got wash and dryers hooked up. They're not saying they're not, they're not going to do any, not hooked up, but not working. So I become the new principal. This is where now I'm in charge. I can, I can jockey a little bit. Right. So took a picture in front of the wash and dryer. Somebody was doing a tour and they put the magic words. This principal is combating bullying by putting washes and dryers in there for his kids. What? Viral. Right. <laughs> So now I call my new superintendent. You gonna be on TV for having washed and dryers, knowing we need it, and they not hooked up. Superintendent Leon, man, I say I called him at nine o'clock, nine thirty. Them things was hooked up, ready to go. So that's what I did. So I used my media, whatever you want to call it, media centric ability, and I and I made it happen. But I couldn't do that as a VP because I would have been stepping on my principal's toes. So y'all 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 hear my ulterior motive with the question. 
as a new principal, because I know it's a lot of APs on the call. Once you get that position, it is nothing like what you what you had as an AP. You you got a full plate and everything stops with you. But it doesn't mean you can't be creative. It doesn't mean you can't seek to meet to meet the needs of the folks in the building, students and staff. But again, you got to have people around you. And that's a whole network you got to build. That's probably for another discussion at another time. But I want you just thinking about that as we as we proceed on. You know, um, Principal Cook, you're um, you're an outside of the box thinker, as I said during the intro. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the things you have on campus. I don't have the complete list, but I mean, you got the urban farm. I think it's dedicated to Ellen. Right. You got the built in soccer pitch, which I had to look that word up. I guess it means field. Right. But uh, <laughs> you have you got the brand new kitchen for the home economics. You got the you got a bank. It's Capital One, correct? Yes, sir. Got, Capital One branch. You got the Capital One branch bank in the school. You just talked about the CVS. And then you got the partnership with Dame Dash. So you got the recording studio in the school as well. And 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 and, and I know that there's so much more, right? And, and you can talk about that within the question I want to ask you. It's a three-part question. Where is your out-of-the-box thinking coming from? All right. So the out of the box thinking is it, I don't come up with these ideas, and I'm calling you Kafili for short. Are we cool? Because I, I I just I call last names. Is that fun? Everybody calls. That's what I. That's all right, what I, right. I want to yeah. make sure I'm not disrespecting you on your platform, sir. No, no, no. But, no. Uh, that's good. Okay. So, so Kafili. So I don't come up with these ideas. The kids do. They present barriers, and I help them remove it. That's what I'm here. I got to make sure that they have an uninvaded trip to that living wage, and we can talk about that later. Because I ain't my my love don't stop at a diploma. Right. So I'm a business and finance school. I told you briefly that I started off business and I had to switch my major because I wasn't cutting it. But I do know this, whether you ever you were on this on this call, the local bodega, they whole family know how to run that run that family business. You learn just because the family owns it. I know how to stock the shelves. I know how to do the cash register. I know how to greet customers. I know how to clean up because it's the family business. I say, you know what? I'm going to make Westside the family business and expose my babies that way. So, so what I'm talking about, Kafele, so let's look at Westside as a business. I have an entrepreneurship pathway for all my kids that are out-of-the-box thinkers, right, that have these amazing ideas. Entrepreneurship pathway, we partner with virtual enterprises, and it creates like this, uh, like the Sims, like this virtual reality world where you play almost playing a real live video game. You barter with other kids from all over the country. You get fired. You got to hire. You got to do all this CEO, CFO, do all of that stuff. That's for my entrepreneurship babies, right? So now I have the idea. The next is my kids that need to raise the money. I got to need the finance kids, the people that can sell water to a well, fundraise, whatever. So mm -hmm. now I have accounting and finance and we get kids a junior MBA. We partner with Seton Hall University. So that's for all my kids that can get the money. I got the idea. Now I have the money. What's next? Advanced manufacturing. I got to manufacture the product. I'm partnering with NGIT. My kids in this pathway, good with their hands, and they can get the stuff, can make the product, right? Idea, money, I'm freezing. You can hear me though, Cafe? All right. No, you're, no, you're good on my end. All right. So, so money, I mean, excuse me, idea, the money, now I have the actual product, right? So now we partner with Google for advertising and marketing. So now you figure out all of these uh, formulas or these uh, algorithms to, you know, to, to, to work the work, to work the work, right? So now yeah. we're marketing it. And the last thing is supply chain management, which is logistics. I have that. I'm partnering with Rutgers. They're the leader in the country as far as that. DHL, FedEx, uh, UPS, United Postal Service, Amazon, whatever you want to call it, right? So now I showed you how I had a product that I took it from an idea, got the money raised. I made the product. I advertised it, and then I sent it out. So if I, that's me exposing my kids to the family business. But then you have outliers. Right. And I don't never want anybody to forget about my special needs babies. Right. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that, some schools, you may have a, a BD program, BD, meaning they have behavioral issues, but that baby is still bright. They just got to if they, you know, feel away. Mm -hmm. I don't have that in my building. Cafe. I have kids that are severe, that have severe learning disabilities or is moderate. Their trajectory is probably not college cafe. And we're going to talk about that later, I'm sure. I got to figure out how to hone in for that baby to be successful. So I added other things as well, some outliers. So I have music technology, right? For, and I'm not talking just rapping or singing. People don't realize that everybody want to be a little baby, but little baby on QC label. 
Like little baby works for somebody, right? And it could be you writing, it could be you producing, it could be whatever. You're like, I learned something about the video. Do you know colorists? The people that color movies, they make hundreds of thousands of dollars just coloring. But nobody talks about that. So I'm talking about behind the scenes, right? Mm -hmm. I have cosmetology here. We all got somebody can do our hair. Let me show them how to get their stuff while they with me, Cafe Le, right? Mm -hmm. So I have that. But more importantly, I'm not just focusing on what I want to say are the nerds. And I can call them nerds because I'm a principal with a bigger nerd than me. But we're taught as educators to never teach at the front of the room. So if everything you do in your building is geared to the nerds and to the kids that's at the front of the room, how dare you? I just told you I had kids that are probably not going to college. How can I show that baby how to get it? So Kefele, that is what I'm trying to do, making it the family business because I got the business part. But now the rest of the family business is no man left behind. And, and and it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard, heavy lift. And you know, that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, and you, you know, you you just you know, you actually just spoke to the one that's not going to college, you know, because you're given so many other other avenues of success beyond just the, the, the college avenue to success. So, you know, you you're hitting it. And 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 I told you it's a three-part question, but you you answered all the questions. So I don't even have to ask the rest of them. But 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 I want to let's go to that entrepreneur program. You know, you your entrepreneur entrepreneurship program is is next level. Um, and, and you hear a lot of that just in what you said to the previous question. I listened to you on this video interview and it it, it, it blew my mind on this. What I'm going to share with you now. You said with the athletics relative to your athletic program, you said we got this covered. Right. Because you got all those various different sports and so forth. You got the championship ring. Yeah, there it is. You said so with the athletics, I got that covered. You said with the music relative to the studio and your connection to industry and all that, you said, I got that covered. But then you said you said, but what caught I, I'm saying what caught my attention, you talked about trapping or drug dealing. And you said, quote, how do I make a drug dealer not look sexy to a kid? I've got to become the new role model in the hood. I want to I want to read that again to the folks. You said, how do I make a drug dealer not look sexy to a kid? I've got to become the new role model in the hood. Here's what I want you to do. Tell our viewers, because we got some folks out there that have similar challenges. Akbar, talk to them about how do they become the role model in the hood or in the neighborhood or in the community, whatever it is they live. How do you become that guy, that gal? So, so I, I'm, I'm glad you bring that up. So, so I think it's a cultural thing that, or it can be whatever you want to call it, that misconception, right? That the only way to get out of the hood is rapping, trapping, right? Or entertainment, you know, or sports, athletics. Right. So those are the three things, athletics, entertainment and, and drug dealing. So that's why I've mentioned that. I said we, we doing the sports. I'm sending the babies to school for sports. Got it. Right. Entertainment. Like you said, I'm, I'm using that. But again, how do I make that fast money that they're getting? And, and listen to this. I'm going to be I'm going to be blunt. And we can be blunt with these kids because you listen to that raunchy, real nasty music that they listen to. I listen to it, too. They can take it. Stop coddling them. They can take it. They listen to that. They know what they want to hear, right? So I'm saying to that baby, I'm saying to them, you are taking penitentiary chances for McDonald's money. And what I mean by that, you go and listen to the on the block, yo, how much money you getting? I'm listening to the money. I'm like, boy, I can't even cut my grass with that. You going to go to jail for that? Let me show you another way. But I can't talk about it. You can't come there in your little beat up car and your little whatever you can feel like you can't do it. You have to live and breathe and show them literally. Can you hear me? Cafe like we still up? I hear, I hear you. Well, OK, you froze on my screen. Oh. You have to show them what that balling looks like. You have to show them the bag. And what I mean by that is and, and cafe, like, I'm going to go on a tangent, but I'm going to bring it back. Right. I feel like there's four pathways to post-secondary success that will get them a living wage. First, two and four-year schools. The second is going to be a trade, right? Third, you got to do the military. And I'm a black boy from North New Jersey. 
I hear what's going on with Russia and all that other stuff, so I'm immediately thinking infantry. I'm not talking infantry. There's people that's making six figures in the military that don't, don't need that 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 are doing human resources, that are doing whatever, but they teach you what you need to learn and you get paid for it, right? So that's three. And the fourth is going right to the workforce, not Chipotle, not McDonald's workforce, meaning police officer, right? We're talking about firefighters. We're talking about doggone ticket punches in New York, New Jersey, make a, a six figures, just walking up and down punching tickets. Right. That's better than welcome to Walmart any day. So that's four. So first and foremost, I show them how to get the bag. That's how you get the bag. And then we start talking real talk. Let's talk multiple pensions. Right. OK, I do this job here. Twenty five years. I go over to New York City, do another 10. I got two pensions and I went to the military. I got three. Show them what uh, we talk about. Generational wealth looks like. Talk about credit. Like no more that projecting your 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 uh I'm gonna say it wrong like 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 oh, I'm gonna say it wrong I'm sorry but we project our fears onto our kids oh my god stop doing that like if you didn't figure out credit and you messed it up that's still not a way for you to block the door for the kids to doing it right so think of these ways bringing money market bringing the bitcoin like Ross talking about do yeah. all of these things that's how I'm saying I'm gonna become the role model but I'm gonna do it I'm gonna be fly while I'm doing it I got the Jays just like them I got a nice car big house you have to show the babies what it looks like or they don't believe you Dame Dash always tells us right fly to the future and see what life you want, and then come back here and make it happen. That's all I'm trying to do for the babies, Kefele. That's it. I'm literally trying to fly to the future with them, like the ghost of Christmas past, and show them what it looks like, and then come back and show them how to get it. If they don't want to do it, then, well, doggone it, I'm going to keep trying to figure it out while I have it. So, so that's – I know I'm all over the place, but no, you that's, good. that's what I'm trying to do, sir. No, you good. I, I, I love it, and I, I know they love it because I've been reading these comments. You know – um. So much I want to say to that, but I want to be respectful of your time as well. Let me let me let me just go here. I want to I want to switch gears a little bit and and go inside the building during the school day. And I think you have two assistant principals, if I'm not um, mistaken. Right. You have two or three. I have three vice principals and I have another four uh, D.C.'s department chairs. OK. So it's eight of us strong. And if you include my security is nine of us strong. So so thinking about those individuals now in conjunction with the, the role of this platform. What is it about their role as APs, as DCs, et cetera? What is it about their role and their existence in your space, in your school, that makes you that much more effective? I believe, and you know this, because you was a leader, you got to hire where your weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. If I'm not the minutia guy, because every district, you guys know this on here, every district comes with minutia. I have someone that's in my right hand that that loves the minutia and loves meeting deadlines and loves all of that, you know, responding to emails. You don't need somebody just for that because you're never going to get any work done because it looked like the principalship in every neighborhood everywhere is for you to be sitting at, you know, the, the desk and the computer like you uh, Captain Kirk or something like that. I don't want to be in the cockpit. I want to. I'm that general that's on the front lines. I ain't going to be in the tent. So you yeah. surround yourself with people that help you fly as well so i let them fly and i fly so i have somebody help me with the minutia i have another i don't i'm not good with business i got mr long he with me with cte and he's the best at that you just surround yourself with people i now you, you get an academic person now you get a scheduler that can do all these crazy things because you want to talk about flex scheduling you're going to have to do that if you're trying to do dual enrollment so i hire my weaknesses I hire my weaknesses. I have to, because if I've got a bunch of me's going on, it's going to be a bunch of me getting work done that way. But the other stuff is going to be falling to the wayside. So I hire based on my weaknesses. I love it. So so let's let, let me just amplify that for the folks out there who are striving to become principal or you are already principal. You you you, you got to have that diversity of a leadership team. Right. As as Akbar just said, if everybody's like you, like like I'm thinking about my style, like, you know, I'm hands on. I'm all over the place. A lot of the, a lot of what you don't like, I don't like either, right? But if everybody was like me, we're not going to get it done, right? Because we we all going to have people, you know, people who are out front doing the things that we do, but all that nuts and bolts, that management, that's not going to get done. So, I lost you, Ak. <laughs> Let's see if he comes back, Stan. He probably has signed out and will come back in. So I, I'll keep that going. Y'all stay there as he probably is going to come back in. I'll text. Yeah, he'll, he'll be back. So 
in in the meantime, let's let me let me stay there. As as a principal, if you have the here he comes, if you have the authority to to bring on somebody new on your team, if you've got if you've got that time frame, whatever the case may be, you got to consider that. And sometimes we're just looking for a great person, but we haven't considered. But where's my weakness, and this person can fill it. Right. So you back, Akbar. So uh, let me let, let me let me keep it going. So that 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 was a, a two parter. So let me ask you the second part of that question. What is it about like 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 I asked you just to just to go back to it. I asked you, what is it about them that makes you better? But now I want to flip it. What is it about your role as principal that makes your APs better? One, like I said earlier, sir, you can hear me. We good because you frozen on my end. We good, though? Yeah, I hear you good. All right, all right. And again, I apologize to all the listeners. I came to school thinking I can use the Wi-Fi here, and it and they got StreamYard blocked as one of the firewalls. So I'm sorry, I'm off my phone right now. But uh, um, uh, I let them fly. I, I learn from the best. I let them fly. I let them fly. And 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 I and I, when I talk about focus on the love, I I run my building, my staff, whatever, whether it's my camp, I, I lead it with love, and I I am big on making everybody have a voice. Like I am not that leader that is going to just know my way is the highway. It's not. I try to be as democratic as possible. When I got to put my foot down, I put my foot down. So I'm not a micromanager. You know, again, if you got a great idea, I step out the way and let you lead. I just tell you, if it blow up in our face, you're going to go with me to see the wizard because I'm not doing by myself. So I let my staff know that. So I don't know whatever leader that you want to be around that one that has your back, want to see you fly, will do anything in its power to make sure you and your family secure. Because everybody, everybody get paid around me, uh, Cafe Lay. I'm talking about that's why people stay with me. Like I, what I mean by that is if it's money to be made because we didn't get into this business for money, but we all need it. We all got, you know, problems. We got bills. We got whatever. I make sure. I make a way for all my people to eat outside of what North Public School does. So if you're around me, I'm at Cook Educational Solutions, I'm at Life Camp, I'm at this, I make sure my people eat. So you eat with me, you can grow with me. Oh, we lost them again. Yeah, see see what, what's happening for those of you that missed that. He's, um, he's doing this from school and that school is blocking StreamYard. So he'll 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 be back. So I'm I'm just going to fill it while we're while we're waiting for him. You know we got we live, so we we keep it going. You know, um, you'll remember you'll see on your titles that this is called school culture is everything, and that's what the questions are being geared towards. School culture. We waiting for Akbar to come back. He'll be back. So that's what it's geared towards. It's geared towards the culture of the school. How how do we? As I'm getting ready to ask him when he gets back. How do we take students to another level academically when the culture of the school is dysfunctional, when the culture of the school is toxic? How do we take a school to high levels of academic performance? And, and when I say high levels of academic performance, I am not talking about standardized assessments per se. I'm, 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 I'm just talking about learning in the classroom, because remember, Students are not attending school so that we can pass state standardized assessments. Are you on a different device? Let me just kill. Let me let me just exhaust this thought real quick. Students are not attending school for state standardized assessments. Students are attending school to learn and to be able to take what they learn wherever it is that they want to go. So we're talking about school culture, and I'm asking you, my audience, real quick, and then I'm going back to Akbar. Are you trying to operate within a culture that is dysfunctional or toxic, or are you operating within a culture that is conducive to youngsters having a willingness to soar academically? So, so with that said, uh, Akbar, did you did you exhaust that thought? Now I don't know the last thing you heard, but you know, I think I answered it though. Like, I, yeah, yeah, I, I think you I, did. Okay, so let now me, I'm on my phone now, so we should be good. I'm just I'm on a smaller screen. And, and I might. And, and before I go to this next question to the audience, uh, we're going to be done by 1230. But let me let me say this to the, let me say this to somebody. Somebody needs to hear this. And you've heard this before, but I'm going to say it again. You got to stay ready. So you don't have to get ready. 
when 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 Akbar's phone goes out, I'm not going to sit here like, oh my God, I'm ready, man. If 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 I got to take this thing twelve thirty solo, I'm good. And see, you you got to stay ready, so you don't have to get ready. Somebody else might sit there. Oh my God! Oh, what am I going to say? Nah, man, you it, it got to, your leadership got to keep flowing. So when stuff happens, and stuff is going to happen, your leadership still got to keep flowing, right? So let me let me go back to Akbar here. So so. So, so here I want to stay in the school. All right. um, how, how does we've been talking culture, even social emotional for the whole time we've been on? So here, here's what I want to ask you: How does everything you do translate into a school culture that is conducive to high academic performance? And, and this is the twenty million dollar question, which everyone said. They just like, all right, yeah, it's fine. Your kid's safe. Uh, social and emotional, you know, all of this great stuff. But but what about the rigor? What about that? So I had to put my money where my mouth is several times. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. So during COVID, um, I started a dual enrollment program that was going to matriculate to a associate's degree. Two years. I want to say North Tech don't have that. I'm just going to I'm I'm throw a little jab. They don't have that. And some other schools in North don't have it as well, right? But <laughs> I use my out of the box thinking, right? And I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm gonna give you the blueprint right now. I said, my freshmen coming in, I'm gonna give them sophomore classes after school. I'm already here and I'm doing great things after school. My sophomores, I'm gonna give them junior classes after school. I'm already here and feed them good food, right? Now in their junior year, now I make my staff, I told you to some of me, some of them now are junk professors at Essex County College. And now I hire some of the junk professors to come in. Now my kids are learning during the school day college courses. And then they senior year, they go to Essex County and they graduate with an associate's degree. I got 20 kids, first uh, uh, cohort of kids in the history of Westside High School, 20 of them going to graduate with an associate in business degree, right? So that's me saying, yeah, y'all said I wasn't academically, you know, this, that, and the third. I got that. Now I partner with McKinsey and Company. If y'all hear about McKinsey Company, a Fortune 500 company, right? And it's, this is where I talk about my alumni. My alumni got me a sit down with them. They and McKinsey and Company wanted to help. They helped Google. They helped Walmart. They helped, they helped them solve their problems. I got them guys helping Westside with my strategic plan, where I'm talking about individual learning plans for every kid. I'm going to be like the giver. If y'all ever read The Giver, The Giver tracked kids from a baby until they got to where they was going to the workforce, and they let them figure out what they were best at, and they, and they gravitated towards that. We should be doing that in our schooling system. And I thought with the pandemic, we was going to halt and, and, and reset and come back smarter than we did. We back to the same things as, 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 as it has been. So I had them helping me not just talk about getting kids to the living wage, but what it actually looks like. Is it job shadowing? Is it externships? Is it this? Like, how do you have a kid shift from now I want to be a doctor to now I want to be a mechanical engineer? Like, you know, uh, addressing those misconceptions. They tell us as teachers to do these things, right? So that's one of the things I'm doing. But lastly, and I'm a, and I, I, I spoke a little bit about it, but getting better teachers. You know, uh, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to hire one of those, uh, you know, one of those agencies, Cafele, that it's so hard for a principal and my staff to um to to be with the data driven instruction every day. Like almost you need like a chief academic officer that's working with outside agency that monitors it because you're supposed to inspect what you expect, right? And it's so hard for more the minutia that we got to do in the day to day. Like I am looking to hire a chief academic officer that works with one of these big time agencies that attract my teachers and make sure I'm getting the desired results. And the last thing I'm gonna say, Akbar Jr. will be a freshman at Westside High School next year. I don't know what better way to put your money where your mouth is. I live in a nice neighborhood. I'm going to drive him from that nice neighborhood and the Catholic school education that he had to West Side because I believe what we're doing is going to matriculate to him having a living wage, whether it's the dual enrollment or whether all of the things I'm exposing my baby to. Wow. You, let, me, let, me, let me repeat that. You said Akbar Cook Jr. is coming to West Side under the leadership of his father. That's 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 a powerful thing. That that might be the most powerful thing you said all day. That's 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 powerful. Hey, uh, Principal Cook, um, talk to us about how it how and if the pandemic derailed any of your goals and objectives for the past two years. The pandemic set us back. It set us back a, a lot. I, I want to say some of the uh, 
some of the the new trauma and the um, incidents that we're seeing now, it was like when I first came to Westside High School. Uh, more depression, more suicide attempts, more uh, parents giving up. Because that's one thing when you have a parent just uh, you know give up, say I don't listen. This this don't use my number. Don't call me again. Whatever y'all do with him, y'all do with him. I've never had that many parents say it. like it's so many parents saying that right now. Um, trajectory. Like one thing about being in Newark, and it used to be the water before we found out it was lead in it, right? We used to think that, you know, I don't want to say think that, but we used to know that, that if you make it in Newark, you can make it anywhere. That resiliency, that grit, that determination, that perseverance, COVID just sucked the life out of everyone, man. So you had so many people just giving up saying, bump it, I don't even care no more. And and we needed that. We needed that, Cafe Lay. So COVID set us back because now I'm trying to take kids that are already fatigued from COVID and now they don't have that desire, or that grit, or they don't see hope. And why would I, you know, go get this job if I'm going to lose it like my mom as soon as the world shut down again because people not wearing a mask? So it's so many things that I can say it set me back. But in that in that darkness, there was some light. I told you we did find a way to pay the kids. When I talked about that dual enrollment program, my my mayor, my mayor, uh, Raz Baraka, mm -hmm. he uh he had a, he had a, he had a problem. He had a problem with the kids in Newark that had to go to summer school in order to keep going to graduate. They had to choose between going to summer school for free or go get a job and take care of themselves and their family. They was choosing the latter. So he had to come up with a way to take that same summer youth employment money and to pay those kids to go to summer school so they didn't have to juggle between deciding to do the two. But I but I posed something to him and his organization. I said, that's great. That's fine and dandy. But you are rewarding kids that failed or kids that didn't do so hot. What about the baby that's kicking butt every day? You just leaving them to the wayside? So he's absolutely right. We took that same money and those kids I told you about that were doing dual enrollment, we paid them that same money to go to school to be extraordinary. I often talk about extraordinary versus ordinary, y'all. And what I mean by that is you got to do some extraordinary things, going to school after school, you know, staying later, studying harder. You got to do some extraordinary things if you want an extraordinary life. But if you want to be ordinary, there's an ordinary life waiting on you. And I pose it to them like this. I said, somebody going to flip my fries and give me a burger. I said, somebody going to wash my car. I'm not washing it. And that's how brunt and brutal you got to be. I'm not cutting my grass. And if you own the landscaping business, that's all to you. But somebody, you know, is ordinary is going to be doing the labor for you. You have to do that. And it's a kid, right? It's, it's someone right now on Speedway Avenue that's going to be panhandling. Somebody's going to replace that person. Is it going to be you? Yeah. So when I talk about extraordinary versus ordinary, that's what I mean. But when I yeah. pose that to my mayor, that's what he came back with. So we was able to pay those kids to go to school and come out. And then now I think, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs have been on display from everything that we've done, whether it was the, you know, the laundry mat, whether it was, you know, the food insecurities, all of that, that's back on display. So I can say that now that I got with my OSG hats off to some of them off school grounds is in here. Uh, they have provided me myself with an outlet where I can bounce these ideas off and see what some other inspiring principles I've been doing over the world. So, so I feel like I came out of COVID better. I've been investing, you know, I did some GameStop stuff. I did. So I, I've been invested uh, and, yeah. and uh, invested in myself and invested in my community. So yes, I feel like I came out better. Good stuff. Good stuff. We almost done. I'm cutting, I'm, I'm bringing it to, uh, almost at a close, but we, we getting there, hanging there with us folks, you know, um, Principal Cook, people that know me, people that know me on this platform, the work I do out in the field, um, at the core of my work are two things um, of, of, of all that I address, instructional leadership and equity. Those, those, those are my areas, those are, those are my passion. Equity, before there was a word for equitable practices, you know, cause that's, that's like a new word in education. It's a baby word in education, but, but in terms of being equity, that's, that's old as education itself. So I want to ask you a two-parter. As as an instruct, who, who is who is Principal Akbar Cook as an instructional leader relative to the instructional performance of your staff? It's a great question, and I, and I and I toy with this because I often get lumped into the the other side. Yeah, instructional leader. For me to become an instructional leader, I had to again, I had to I had to put some barriers in front of me because when that parent comes to the door, or it's a fight or it's an argument, you know, the AP and me would always run to it. 
I had to separate. I had to put. So now I get a lot of emails, Kefele, saying, oh, I wanted to meet with the principal about this incident. I had to guard myself because I cannot move a building instructional wise if I'm dealing with all of the, you know, all of the little little fires that keep popping up. Now, I get it. If it's something huge, I got it. But I surrounded myself with team that can handle that. I got to stay focused and laser like on instructional. And I told you, I, I looked at all my data and some of it is skewed because of the, you know, they didn't take tests or all that. So the instructional leader got to be focused on just that. And if it's my weakness, making it my strength. So the Akbar, the instructional leader is leaving the stuff that I'm good at, that I can do in my sleep alone and putting myself in uncomfortable situations or or conversations that are going to get my kids the best that they're going to need. So that's me being vulnerable. So the instructional leader is being vulnerable and listening to folks that have done it to a, to a level that I want to get at and then putting my ego to the side and, and listening. You know, I'm going I'm to be very, very, very frank with you on this one with the audience listening. I know as well as you know, everyone knows you for what we've talked about up to this point. I said to my wife last night, I'm going to ask him this question about instructional leadership and equity because I know he can answer the question. But I want him to have the platform to tell the world, to tell the folks that watch and the ones who watch the video that I'm not just that, though. I'm also I, so. So in other words, I wanted I wanted to give you the forum to tell the people, no, I do all that. I'm known for all that, but I'm also an instructional leader. See, because that's important that they understand there's more to you than what the media has covered, right? Yeah. Yes, and the thing about it, I got the same degrees as everybody else. That's what I'm saying. Like, when did I become like the? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I got a master's just like you, and I got a. You know what I mean? I got yeah. doctorate credits. Like, what makes me not that guy? Right, I right. get it. And you know this, Kefele. Most principals, their but their money, their budget will be allocated to what they are known to do, or or, or they or, or, no no their comfort zone. Right. Yeah. I had to start taking some of that. But I just told you, I got to take a big chunk of my money and get this agency to really come in here with a fine tooth comb and figure it out. Because all right, I cook. Your kids safe, but they ain't learning nothing. And, and, yeah. and Kefele, when I knew I was in trouble. When we have rubric scores, right? Rubric meaning if it's a four at West Side, it should be a four at Milburn. It should be a four at yeah. Illinois. I had, I'm looking at papers and they're like, well, it's a four. And you look at Milburn, I'm like, man, this is a one. So when you start, you're talking about equity, when you start looking at stuff like that, it's like, oh, I got to throw more resources at this, that, and the third. So when I spoke to my alumni recently, I said, I'm all in. We have to figure this out. We're not doing enough. And, but I'm always keeping a focus on getting my kids ready for the Hunger Games Cafe Lay. Like I get all this book stuff, but a test is not a predictor of post-secondary success. It's just not, That's it is right. not. A lot of A plus students working for some C plus students out there. So trying to find a happy medium, but I am an instructional leader. And now in order to stay that way, Cafe Lay, I gotta guard, I gotta guard myself more. You gotta guard your time, right? And, and then the second part to that, you know, with, with the word equity, you know, I defined it. I gave it a simple definition. I said equity is meeting young people where they are as they are. So so however I come into that building, <clears throat> that's me. I, I'm sorry, teacher. I can't be what you would have wanted me to be. I'm, I'm, I'm me. Now, your job is to meet me there. So with that said, who is Principal Cook, Principal Akbar Cook, through an equity lens? I think everything that we talked about today shows that I'm meeting my babies where they are. Yeah. Some of them are fifth grade reading level, right? I told you, like, like people often just forget their special needs population when they should be scheduled first. They need to be dressed first, right? I really have to figure out how to do this individual learning plan, Kefele. I really have to figure it out. And the traditional school model was not going to be it. I'm, I'm telling you, because I already know that some of my kids can't come to school at eight o'clock. They just can't. And if they do, they're so tired from whatever they did before that is I'm not going to get anything out of them. So do I flex schedule them? Like I got it. We talked about thinking out of the box. Equity means I have to meet them where they are. Meaning if it's at 4 p.m. and I keep them to 10, you know, get that 630 in some way then we have to figure that out. Cause I got staff that might be want to be on that night shift or, or, or that, or that hour. So I think equity and, 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 and the picture that they have where all three of us is on a, a box, but all of our heights are different. Mm -hmm. That is the best version of equity, that visual of equity that I've ever seen. Yeah. So I yeah. have some kids, listen, 
I have a hard, a huge population from West Africa. My Nigerian, my Ghanaian, they come here and they get it. They get it. My Portuguese kids, they get it. Some of my kids from the Dominican, they get it. It's my doggone westernized Americans here that right. think we owe them right. something that don't get it, right? So I may not have to put a uh, one of those stepping stools for my babies that I just mentioned. But my other ones, I might need to get them three and four of those crates for them to see over that gate. So that's what equity means to me. Like, I have to figure out how to make all of them win. The, the, the cream of the crop is supposed to rise to the top. What about that baby that's got a, a, a ball and chain tied to his foot? I got to figure it out. I'll yeah. leave it with this. They say you can you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. What dog going to give him a straw? Yeah, that's right. I love it. I love it. We're almost done. I want to focus on the love. I got a question for you. For those of you that checked in later than, we, than when we started, Amazon. This is Akbar's new book came out Valentine's Day, February 14th. Focus on the love. You can get it at um at, at, at Amazon right now. Right. So focus on the love. Um, Akbar, um, focus on the love. What exactly do you mean by that title? I guess the past hour and a half, that's what you were giving us. So so that that real quick summary, why a title like that? Focus on the love. As I had this, if you want to call it rise to, to, to fame or whatever the case may be, you want to call it, I found myself dwelling on the negative. Like, like, why would you hate on kids in your own city and this and the third? And it took a friend of mine, Shadi Lava Thompson. Lava said, Ak, man, you got to focus on the love. You have to focus on what the people that love you and how they poured into you and, and what are you doing? If you If you keep dwelling with the nonsense with that, you're not going to get nothing out of it. So when he said that to me, I knew I wanted to name my book Leading with Love, but it just made so much sense to say, man, focus on the love. If you just focus just on that, like as parents can fail, like, like it's, it's, it's almost innate. Like it's in as soon as that baby come into the world, I have to protect them with all costs and make sure that they aspire to be better than me. What if you did that with your organization? I don't care if you're the head of custodians. I don't care if you're a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. You are the, the leader of the painters in your union. If you just led with love and gave everybody the insight that you would give your children or your siblings, like, you could change the world. So I want to just create this a how-to manual of just me, what makes me go. Talked about matching my fly. Talked about things that made me who I am, quotes that are just, just resonate with you. But I put one story in there, Cafe Lay, and I'm not going to give it all because I want you to read it. It's about Alfonso Anderson. Alfonso Anderson was one of my kids that was the most, well, I don't say most gangster, but he was definitely in the streets, played basketball for me. And if that baby would have stayed here, Cafe Lay, he would be dead now and uh, he'll be in jail easily. I shipped him off to Cheyenne, Wyoming, to a mm -hmm. junior college out there. And that boy, when I say he got there, like, cook where you got me at. I said, trust me, man, it's a good coach staff. They're going to take care of you. And I'm not, I'm, I'm going to be skipping around it. So I got the word that they was like, yo, cook, he about to come home. I hopped on a plane, Cafe Lay. I went out there to see that baby. I get there, he don't got no sheets on the bed, no. I said, pal, why you ain't call us? He like Leonidas, man. You send him out in the wild, and he come back wearing a lion's coat. So he that type of kid. He just was getting through it. But pound is, is, is more than that. So that was almost five years ago. That boy graduated from that historically, uh, no, he graduated from that junior college and he's at a historically black college right now. But if wow. I would have gave up on him, and it's not over, because my wife, if she watches, I'm getting in trouble. He, Pound called me recently and said, Cook, I don't have enough money and nobody can help me out to finish. Yo, I co-signed the loan for that baby. My own son don't have me co-sign the loan. Wow. That's what I'm talking about, focus on the love and going beyond the call of duty. If you focus on the love and all I see is that boy winning, I, the rest of his stuff going to work itself out, Cafe Lake. So that's what I'm talking about. There's one story in there, and I'm going to make sure that baby worked for me when he's done. But Cafe Lake, can I say this? Yeah. And it's for all you academic people, I mean by focus on the love. If we just do the bare minimum, well, what are we really doing? What I mean by that, let's take this, Cafe Lake. You was in high school. We all give our kids driver's ed right cafe like, listen to me now driver's yep. ed they have opportunity to get that blue card but i know i got kids who parents to catch the bus they don't have any means to a car and more importantly if they do have a car they don't have that emergency break in the middle to go take it to get it tested so we as the educators are just giving kids those blue cards knowing it's going to blow up in their face because they don't got no way to get it why is that the norm 
Mm-hmm. Why can't I take some of this money, go buy a putt putt, and use the best best parking lot that I have in the city and get some of my teeth to teach my babies how to drive? Why well, yeah. can't? But that's what education is. So if I just focus on the love, I can see past the monotony and the redundancy of what education is doing, and I can see the real goal. If I am doing this for a kid, I want him to survive, I'm going to teach him how to fish and stop giving them fish. So that's what Focus on the Love is about, just my how-to approach of figuring out how to navigate the nonsense and see which why you, you see your why is what some of your people are doing. I love it, man. I, and I read it on a few flights. And, um, man, you know, the, the, the pointers that you have in there, the steps to take, it's, uh, it's so much there. So, folks, uh, again, get your hands on it. Focus on the love. Release in February, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Get yourself a copy of this book. You know, we're just about done. You know, we do these impact questions. I call them my 20 BAM impact questions. But I got one more for you that I think is very relevant because you said a lot. You know, it, it, at one point in this interview, Akbar, you, um, it, when you were talking about the light on, I, I, I became exhausted. And I, and I mean that in a very literal way, because you talked because you, you talked about the just just the hours you talked about your, your wife and just the, the, the amount of time and effort that goes into what you do. So my question to hear from you, but also for members in the audience that may need to hear it. How do you maintain a sense of balance between your professional life as a principal, but we know that you're also a speaker, and I want you to talk to that as we when we close. But your 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 the, the demand for your services outside of the school, such as what I asked you for today, and you got something else coming right after we finish, and then your personal life. So so how how are you balancing that so that you maintain a, a high level of sanity? It's and and, and, and Kefeli, you and I talked about this numerous times offline. Mm -hmm. about how you knew when it was time to go and, and 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 how you're doing so well and all these things and you put me on so many platforms so thank you first for that sir, yes, sir. So, so you are a mentor to me and if i have spoken to you about this i talk about the sum of me you know I, i'm the sum of the people around me i had to surround myself and i mentioned osg on here off school grounds a coalition of people uh not just educators but mostly you know black and brown educators from all over the globe but like-minded individuals i had to surround myself with people that i could bounce ideas off meaning how do you gain peace like what do you do to 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 pull away and find yourself again because it's because you know it this thing is hard man it's hard and if you don't have those people in your camp that know what you're going through and and, and, and can help you talk through it that's it so i say it's it's been a juggling act sir it's been a juggling act i have my kids with me whether they had lights on whether I'm feeding the homeless, whether I'm doing Christmas tree giveaway, I have, it's a family business. So my babies are not missing time, but I do have to find time just for them. And luckily my sons, I have sons and I, we video games. So I make sure I got the newest video game with them. I may be the sacrificial lamb and a lot of them, I mean, they having to save me from a lot of stuff that we playing, but it's my way of giving back. But I just feel like good things happen to good people. And if I keep you know, keeping my foot or the or, or or you know on the on the neck or the pulse of what's out there, I can keep preparing my community and my kids in this building and my family for what's the, for for what's out there. But it's a it's a juggling act, sir, and I haven't figured it all out. I haven't, but I'm. Yeah. I got AJ with me night night. He gonna be at school with me now. Amada be after that. Like they gonna get daddy's daycare one way or the other. And then the wife, like I said, she's a she's a teacher. The uh, block up. So oh. We have moments yeah my, yeah literally speedway avenue school is right up the street she teaches second yeah. okay so we, we it's the family business but it's hard it's a hard man it's very hard to fail and i'm gonna keep leaning on you for advice because yeah, people like oh he's leaving everybody like oh he just doing it for likes he want to leave i'm not going nowhere my son coming here what are we talking about <laughs> yeah. i'm not done i have not done anything i can graduate a corpse it could be weekends at bernie's right now it's weekend i can drag a corpse across the stage cafe lay that is not going to get my kid a living wage. It's just yeah. not. So yeah. I have not figured it out. Like you said, I'm still trying to be the best instruction leader I can be. I still have to do that. So I'm not done. I'm not done. So you some weekends, I, I, I do things like this. You know, my summers, I'm out, baby. I, I see you places, me and you out. I'm out in the summer. So I find my time. I'm going <laughs> spring break. I'm going to Africa, uh, to Cameroon, to set up some lights on stuff out there with them. Oh, so man. When I'm Woo! off, I'm off. I wish parents realized that. Like, I do get off at a certain time. But but that's I, I'm juggling the Kefeli. But it's a, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful struggle, as they say. Yeah. 
This is my brother right here on the screen, Vincent Stallings. He's at uh, East Orange STEM Academy. So I introduced the two of y'all virtually, right? Hey, 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 Ock, let's get these, these BAM impact questions, man. There's 20 of them. All I need is one word, right? Or if you need to give me a sentence, give me a sentence, but, but, but you don't need to give me a full statement. Here we go. Is education on the right path for underserved children? No. Can true equity occur in America's schools for black, brown, and other underserved students? It can. Does your, Akbar Cook, does your work contribute to the progress we desperately need? I would hope so. If you could do a reset on your life, would your line of work be different or the same? Same thing. Why do you continue to do this work? I can't be the weakest link for my babies. What fires you up within the work that you do? Seeing them win. What do you dislike about the work you do? Politics. Everybody's answer. What has been your greatest victory in this work? My grandma seeing it. What has been your greatest mistake? Not seizing the moment when I had it. What has been your greatest challenge? Politics. Are you proud of your first year as a principal? Absolutely. Are you proud of your first year as an assistant principal? Absolutely. Who inspires you in this work? Wow. OSG. Tell them what they tell them what that stands for too. Off School Grounds is a coalition of dope people, educators, senators, doctors, principals, APs, just people that want to change change our narrative. Very good. What are you reading right now? Book, magazine, article, whatever. Wow. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I got to get my money right, man. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. What book do you recommend for our viewers? Focus on the love. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> um, what do you want to accomplish that you haven't accomplished yet? That post-secondary success for all babies. There you go. Are you satisfied with where you are professionally now? No, sir. What could you say to a viewer out there who continues to face closed doors? If not you, then who? What are you waiting on to change the world? Be the change you want to see. Your kids are wild. Love it. What could you say to a viewer out there who's lost their fire? You didn't get into this business for money, so, so find out why you did it and, and keep it pushing. And lastly, if Principal Akbar Cook was a word in a dictionary, what would be your definition? Love. It is love. I think you did it the quickest of all the guests I've had on here, man. I, I appreciate you. I salute you. I'm, I'm honored that you're on the platform. Tell the folks how they can reach you. Let the folks know that, that you're a speaker so how they can book you, you know, all, everything. You book everything. Yeah, so uh, cookeducationalsolutions.com. Uh, like Kefele said, I, I'm a, I'm, I'm a uh, speaker, but I'm a mentor to principals all over the country. I got two schools in L.A., two schools in Vegas, about to be three schools in Vegas. I got schools in uh, the Virgin Islands. I'm up and down the East Coast. I'm in over 20 schools in New York City. I'm talking, we just mentor and just we figure it out. I mean, summer's New York City. You got to work. So I'm over there working with them the whole summer. So but cookeducationsolutions.com. Please follow me on Instagram or, or uh, it's principal underscore A-K-B-A-R Akbar. Uh, link in the bio. Kefele didn't mention it, but I also put out an album to go with my book for all my visual learners. All you guys that don't want to hear curses, get the clean version. It got me with uh, some laundromat stuff, so you'll know it's clean. But I did that, one, to give my son the platform to be uh, CEO, and it's his company. I'm his first artist, his biggest artist. I partnered with Dame Dash on there, but it's a musical collection of a compilation album of my kids. It's my kids at Westside. Again, when I told you that... They thinking music or entertainment the only way to get out. Well, guess what? Here go a platform. They on my album. I got over 350,000 streams just on Spotify alone. Wow. So go check that out. Again, Principal Akbar on Twitter. I'm on Heather B. Every, uh, Heather B. Show on Sirius XM every Tuesday. Check out uh, at, at uh, 1230 to 1. Uh, yeah, 12 to 12. 12 to 1. Uh, Kefele. I mean, you're going to see me with Kefele. We out here, man. I just, I'm just happy that for this platform. 
Uh, I, I aspire to be like a Fele one day. I'm 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 gonna follow his uh his footsteps here shortly, but I still got some work to do. He did his thing on the dance floor, but I still got to do some more dancing before I can follow behind him completely. I appreciate the love, my brother. You you know as as I do, you 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 hit it out the park. Grand slam, four runs in. We won. Good stuff. Hey y'all, if as I always say. If, if you love what you heard today, hit up some, give, give me some fire on that thread, y'all, or some love, some hearts, whatever your favorite emoji, but let, let Akbar know that you appreciated the time spent. There's one of my former students, Mike Madrano in the building. Oh, Mike, that's my, yeah, Mike was my baby at Avon. Yeah, oh, Mike. okay. Well, he was my yeah. high school student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike, that's my baby on there. Yeah. Wow, oh, small world. Yeah, hit them. Yeah, here they come. I see it. Bombs, emojis. I mean, our uh, fires and so forth. Yeah, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Look here. Hey, hey Ock, do me a favor. Uh, stay on here for a hot second while I close out, right? So I can hit, so talk to you offline real quick. Hey, y'all. Glad you were here. What another dynamite session. I love all the fire that's still coming for Akbar. Uh, he's got to do another session. So let me let me hurry up. Next week, I got Principal Michael McGrone from out in Chicago. He's a principal at a juvenile detention uh, facility. So uh, come on and, and, and be with us. He's also a former high school principal. So come on and be with us. That's Michael McGrone. Make sure that you, I hope you heard me. I'm going to, beginning in May, I'm not going to use my personal page to stream this anymore. Someone just asked me, are we on, is, is this on YouTube? I stream directly to YouTube. So Virtual AP Leadership Academy YouTube, Virtual AP Leadership Academy Facebook, and then Principal Cafele at Twitter. So those will be the three starting in May. And also starting in May, I'm going back to solo first Saturdays only. Then I have guests the rest of the month. So every first Saturday starting in May, I just got to, I got to, I got to let you know what I'm thinking, right? So first Saturday, uh, every, every, every month starting in May. Make sure you check out Sean Hurt tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Or, or I think he says six o'clock on Facebook Live. Sheka Houston and Tammy Taylor, Dr. Sheka Houston on Facebook Live every Saturday at 1030. Unlock the middle with my man Josh Tovar and the crew. Seven o'clock Sunday nights, Facebook Live and in Village Leadership Group with Dr. Roz Gaskins and Coach Williams, Tuesdays and Thursdays at six o'clock. Uh, make sure you check out principalcafele.com. Make sure you follow that that uh, Facebook page I told you, but also uh, subscribe to the Virtual AP Leadership Academy um youtube channel right make sure you subscribe to that so that you don't miss anything and then lastly your diet your exercise and your COVID precautions take care of yourselves take care of everything so that you're here for your young people on a regular basis with that said we'll see you all next week so have a great week have an extraordinary week have your best week yet peace peace Thumbs up, cock that fist back, count to three, one, two, three, bam! It was a great day. I'll see y'all next Saturday. Be safe out here this week, y'all.